Hello, everyone. Stephen here. Thank you for joining me today for another Reef Chat. If you love Reef Aquarium and enjoy a good discussion, please help support me by commenting and sharing your experiences in this topic. Couple of disclaimers. Number one, I do not claim to be an expert in this area. Everything that I'm sharing is based on my 20 plus years experience in this hobby, including retail experience. Please use your best judgment, but also be kind to me and others in this topic. Number two, I'm not paid, endorsed, or affiliated with any businesses for creating this type of content. So let's dive into our "Is Blank Right for Your Tank" series. Our focus today is the Harlequin tusk fish. The Harlequin tusk fish is undoubtedly an eye catcher in any environment. And will be a great discussion topic with any guest for those who are able and willing to house it. It belongs to the ras family. One fun fact about the tusk fish group is that they can turn their head, something not many fish can do. This will come into play with their diet, which we'll cover in a short bit. Let's discuss the basic care needs for the harlequin tusk fish. In the wild. This fish can get close to a foot long, and is a very robust, strong swimmer. This translates to a need for a very large tank, tank large enough for the fish to stretch its legs and vigorous water movement to help mimic its natural environment. I will not get into the tank size discussion because everyone has their own opinion on that, but let's just say you should just best judgment. As far as its diet. I guess we can also cover this topic along with whether or not this fish is quote reef safe unquote. Now the phrase reef safe is a very ambiguous term, so I'm going to actually break it down into different creature groups. Corals, in my experience, the fish is safe to keep with any and all types of corals. Anemone, I would say at your own risk. As I say, they're strong swimmers, but I have seen stronger fish get tangled up and eaten up by anemones. Crustaceans, I say at your own risk. In my experience, they will eat any and all crustacean introduced after the fish has been established, and devour everything once it's grown to a mature size. Sea cucumbers, I'd say it is safe in my experience. Urchins, also safe in my experience, but I have heard of tragedies. So again, at your own risk. And the same applies to starfish. Bivalves of any kind, including clams, scallops, etc. To me, those are no-no in my experience, as、um, that's part of their natural diet. Snails. So linking back to their head-turning topic, it is also a no-no. But I guess it depends on the size. Here's the kicker. So, in the head-turning ability, in the wild, they use that ability to actually grip onto a snail shell. Then they will twist, tore. And then turn head and the body to quote unquote unscrew the snail from the rockwork to consume them. So if your snail are, you know, kind of bite size, they will be able to grip onto it, get them off the surface, and then eat them. Larger ones may have a better chance to skip this menu, but I also can't guarantee it. Other fish. In my experience, a well-fed tusk fish hasn't shown an appetite to its fish tank mates. But I also try not to keep any fish that are bite-sized alongside this aggressive or semi-aggressive fish. And yes, I definitely label the harlequin tusk fish to be one of the more aggressive ones. <laughs> Lastly, human.、Um, watch for your fingers. Let's just say I have been snipped. And blood has been drawn when sticking my hands in the tank doing maintenance work. So, 
if you have to, always keep an eye on this guy if you're poking your hand in a fish tank. So by now you probably have a pretty good chance on this guy's diet. They aren't very picky. Literally devours anything you throw in there. Even house insects, just for fun. Sometimes I throw flies, beetles and such into my tank and my tusk fish and trigger fish will gobble them up. So, are they right for your fish tank? Well, let's count the check boxes. One, do you have a large enough tank for the fish to grill and swim freely? Do you have coverage over the tank? Because they can and they will jump. Are you okay with this fish to potentially bullying others in the tank and be a terror to both you and its tank mates? Are you okay with this fish making some rockwork rearrangements and possibly sacrifice some of your cleanup crew for its nourishment? Do you like seeing a very entertaining feeding show? And lastly, do you love a fish with brilliant coloration that is red, white, and blue looks super patriotic? So if your answer is yes to all of the questions above, I'd say give this fish a chance to fall in love with you. It truly is a cool fish, and I know for as long as I have a tank, I will always want to have one. They aren't the cheapest fish out there in today's market, so please consider all factors carefully to make sure you can provide this fish and all other critters in the tank a long and happy life before you commit. One side topic, I have seen pictures of Australian and Indonesian versions of this fish, but to be completely honest with you, I cannot tell the difference between the two and certainly not calling one or the other out if I just see a fish in an aquarium. Now if you know how to differentiate and summarize all these differences in just like one sentence or one specific keyword, please feel free to share. Also, if there are any size or behavior differences between the original collection, you know, we would love to hear from you, your comments, and also your experiences with this fish. Thank you again for joining me today, and I'd love to hear from you.